JX in the building after a big comeback win. Jeffrey, before we get to this game, you had to feel to have lost to the lowest rated player who was playing poorly and then bounce back and be the number two player on the planet. Yeah, um, it is. It's a bit of a shock for me, to be honest, because um, I had a very bad feeling after yesterday. And uh, coming into the, today, to, to be honest, I didn't have much uh, ambition. So, you know, I just, I didn't prepare too much, just played um, Knight of 3, G3 and see what happens. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel very lucky because, especially considering how the opening went, I felt I didn't really uh, have any, <laughs> I didn't really deserve to, to win. He did seem like he came after you, all guns blazing. Let's take a look uh, on the screen at this position. When he played the move A5, uh, did you feel like, okay, the guy thinks he's got to beat me, even with the black pieces? No, I think he was actually just playing uh, what he thought was objectively best. I think the A5, A4 inclusion, I feel like, is, uh, is good for black in general. So I tried to improvise with uh, bishop g5, knight c1, but I think it's not a very good idea. Um, because, yeah, in the game, I think it's already just worse for me. And yeah, this position was supposed to be not so great. You had to play bishop f3. That must have been not a move you wanted to do. Uh, yeah, bishop f3 to set up knight g4. The, the good thing is um, it's a very bad bishop, so I want to trade it with bishop g4. So maybe it's not uh, such a useless move. But yeah, I think the critical mistake from him was uh, when he played g5. Because I think it just uh, really wasn't necessary. And it created kind of a hook for me later when I played h4. But were you surprised by his decision to play the move bishop e6, given, your, uh, given that he had this bishop, sort of good bishop, that he didn't have to give up? Yeah, that's a fair point, but I think I, I wasn't actually that surprised. Um, yeah, he can definitely keep the bishops, but like I said, if instead of g5, if he just castles, I think it's a very pleasant position for black. He just wants to... Um, play like rook c8, knight e7, and eventually I'm going to have to play very passively to uh, hold the c2 pawn. Later, this knight of yours that went all the way to c1 made this march all the way to d5. That must have given you some comfort when you put the knight on d5. Were you shocked by his choice of knight to d8? Yeah, yeah, that I was definitely... Well, not at first. I mean, it made sense that he wants to bring to d6, but when I saw knight b4 was available, then I was wondering what he had uh, prepared there. Because, yeah, once the knight lands on d5, it seems very dangerous uh, for him. You then uh, traded on g5. And in this moment, uh, we had a, a possible move. If uh, You took on b5 here. But I'm going to prod you and say you have a winning move right now. Were you told before, or do you? Uh, I, I mean, my first instinct was probably knight takes d4. But I couldn't make that one work, so. That was my in first instinct as well, Jeffrey. As it turns out... Ooh, wow. Ooh. <laughs> that's very nice. Yeah, Ooh. Wow. Yeah, that's, that was the move uh, that you, you, you've missed. It, it, it's a gorgeous move. Uh, we would have had you, we would have called security on you. you no, <laughs> stop it. You could see moves like that. Right. And Knight H4 was, was winning on the spot, it turns out. Mm -hmm. Somehow you got yourself to this position. Had, did, did you realize how strong a move Rook A6 was? Not at first, but yeah, once I, mean, once I figured out Rook AF1, uh, Rook D8 was fine for him. I needed to look for something else. Right. And uh, yeah, I always have ideas of you know, Knight D2, Knight E4. But right. I think Rook A6 is just a great um, inclusion because yeah. Like, uh, maybe the idea is to provoke king g7, rook a7. Mm -hmm. He has to go king j8 back, and now knight d2 is already very powerful. That was exactly what uh, Alejandro thought as well, that this would end up freezing uh, you completely. However, G we can back up, because yep. there was something that, that you'd asked me the question, that the engine did spot after rook a6, and that is rook takes d3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were discussing this line. Um, so rook g6, king g7, rook f6. And then e4. Yeah, yeah. I think he, he probably felt that this uh, was enough for a draw, but under time pressure, he couldn't work it out. So 
I think we were saying uh, rook f7, rook f7, knight g5. Rook f7 check, rook f7, knight g5. And then you might have to be precise with where you put, probably g7 makes the most sense. G7? Just to avoid, because uh, I don't think I take with rook, right? If, right. So yeah, okay. once I take with a knight, there aren't any checks. And then, yeah, I guess you can just go e3. E3. Wow. Temporary sham sacrifice of uh, peace. Some nice, nice things. Jeffrey, uh, congratulations. Seriously, that was a very, very, very big scalp. Uh, and uh, what are you going to do on your rest day? Uh, I think the idea was to, uh, to watch uh, Moneyball. So I will watch that uh, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. But Who came up with that idea? Uh, it was, yeah, I saw this movie was available on Netflix, and then I wanted to find a good time to watch it, and I made it. I, I decided the best time was maybe uh, tonight. So During the Sinfield yeah. Cup. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs>